Good evening, everybody, and welcome, and thanks for joining me before a holiday weekend. So I want to wish all of you, first of all, a very happy Passover if you're celebrating and a happy Easter, and enjoy the time with your family <clears throat> this weekend. Tonight, we're going to talk about lasers, which have been my passion for over 20 years and how we implement them into our practice. And I want to thank Ultradent and NSK for sponsoring this program. Everything I'm going to show you are cases that we've done in our practice. So I work full time in my offices. I have three offices in New York and I do work full time and I'm able to document these cases to share with all of you. I also like friends, so please friend me at Vino Dentino, where there I show the latest and greatest in dental technology and fine Napa wine. So friend me at Vino Dentino, and you, and you can also use Instagram as a portal to ask me questions. So you can DM me questions if you couldn't get them tonight, direct message me and I'm always willing to respond. <clears throat> I'm also a board member of Catapult Education, and I work with my colleagues to bring you the best of the best in dentistry. We work with many manufacturers on a variety of levels, from consulting to product reviews, to advising, to doing webinars and education. And when we get to products and work with them, they're usually well before you get them. So we work out the kinks before, so once they come to you, you will have a product that you know you could use safely in your office and, and our reviewers will review them and, and give the catapult seal of approval for the products that uh, deem worthy. But tonight we're gonna to talk about lasers and gain an initial understanding of diode lasers specifically and their use in day-to-day -day practice. Now, you have to understand, I could spend a day talking on lasers. So I'm gonna rapid fire you in 50 minutes of a few key points on lasers to give you a taste of lasers. And if you want more, well, I'll be doing about half a dozen courses for Ultradent this year in a variety of cities. And you can attend those courses. So we have one coming up in Maryland in a few weeks. We have one in Anaheim, uh, one in, uh, I wanna say Charleston and a variety of other places. So, so if you go to ultradent.com, you could find those. They are a day and a half, uh, programs or meetings where it involves myself and a few other speakers on some hot topics where I'll be talk, getting to a more in-depth program on lasers. But tonight, we're going to give you a taste of what I do in day-to-day -day practice. So a day in the life of a diode laser uh, user in the office, and, and, and we're using it in hygiene and operative dentistry and crown and bridge, oral surgery, implants, and so, so much more as I'll demonstrate and show you tonight. I can never imagine a world without soft tissue lasers. I'd have to go back to packing cord. I haven't packed cord in 15 years and have no intention of packing cord anytime soon. It would be difficult for me to uncover teeth and implants and create gingival symmetry post orthodontics for aesthetics. It, I could do a tongue tie made with electrosurge, but my patient would suffer so much afterwards as opposed to diodes where they really don't have any kind of discomfort. I'm able to treat and control periodontal disease with my diodes. And these are just some of the things that we can do day to day in the office. So there are a few things we need to know about basic science of diode lasers to gain an understanding of them. Diode lasers, like all lasers, are characterized by their wavelength. And diodes will range on the electromagnetic spectrum from 810 to 1064, which means nothing to you. But what you do need to know is that diodes energy is absorbed by pigment and hemoglobin. You cannot cut, you cannot cut hard tissue at all with diodes, but they do cut and coagulate soft tissue really well. So these are important things to note about a diode. So many times someone will say to me, what about electrosurgery? Isn't it the same? It's heat. Well, it's the same in the sense that you're burning tissue, but how it happens is an entirely different process. Diodes themselves are precise. You have minimal thermal damage, little to no tissue recession. You can use them around ortho brackets, amalgam and implants, and you can use them for perio and endo as well. Electrosurgery 
you know, is a considerable amount of thermal damage. You risk recession in the anterior. You cannot use it around metal and you can't use it for treating perio and endo. To show it to you schematically or in a picture, to give you an idea of the level of thermal damage of an electrosurgery on the left versus a diode on the right, you can only imagine that our patients will be much more comfortable after diode surgery as opposed to electrosurgery, and your risk of recession is far, far less with a diode versus electrosurgery. So what are my advantages of using a diode? Because if you're going to spend money on the diode, you, ha you have to have some ROI, as I call it. And ROI comes two ways. It comes in the form of a financial ROI. Can I make more money with the technology? And it also comes in the form of the reduction of stress on the heart. That's to me return of investment. So if it ticks either one of those boxes, great. If it ticks both those boxes, even better. So why diodes? Well, first of all, they're minimally invasive. Number two, you have less discomfort post-operatively than with other modalities like scalpel and electrosurge. You can use less anesthesia. So for instance, if I'm troughing, typically on the palatal, I do not have to anesthetize. The patient will feel a little something, but nothing that's gonna bother them. You'll have far less or no bleeding at all. Of course, that's tissue dependent. And the reason for that is diode is absorbed by pigment and hemoglobin, which makes them ideal for uh, soft tissue surgery. The patients also feel you're, you're totally high tech and you can market that, but those are not the reasons of using a diode. They're just ancillary advantages that exist if you have a diode. So if everything I'm telling you is true. Why have diodes not have a place in every dental practice in the country? Well, if you think like a dentist, the answer always falls back to one thing, it's cost. And many dentists don't understand the ROI and the value of a diode laser. And the cost is one thing, but the ROI is there. And the government helps us with the cost. So we shouldn't even be concerned with the cost. This is the 2022 section 179 written by the government. And you must check this with your accountant. Please just, I'm using this for reference. I know it to be true, but check with your accountant. You can buy over a million dollars worth of dental equipment and rapidly depreciate that and probably save about 40% or is it 35% tax rate? Most people are in a higher tax bracket than that. You're probably at 37. You will save 37% and get that right off day one. So if you're purchasing a diode for five, six, seven, 8,000 bucks, you're gonna write 40% close to it off day one. So your true costs are not a lot of money. The next opposition is learning curve. People say, well, I have to learn how to use a diode. The learning curve is easy for a diode. One thing you have to know is all dental lasers are end cutting. Unlike us with a burr, where the burr can cut on the side and the end, laser energy comes out in the diode in the form of a tip. So it only comes out the end. The energy precedes the tip. Once you know that and you can't cut on the sides, well, then it's like writing with a pencil. So, and you have to know that with diodes, in order to cut, you must be in contact with the soft tissue. One of the most incredible pieces of technology that launched into the diode laser world about four years ago plus was the Gemini diode from Ultradent. And the reason is, remember I told you that diodes have a wavelength between 810 and 1064. At 810, the coagulation is better than, let's say, 980. At 980, in theory, it cuts a little faster at 810. It's imperceptible to the eye, but it actually does. So for years, there's been this battle. Should I get an 810 or a 980? And in Europe, 980 was the prevalent wavelength. And in the US, 810 was the prevalent wavelength. Well, four years ago, Ultranet launched a laser called the Gemini Laser which had the ability to combine both wavelengths at the touch of a button, maximizing the property. So it would cut faster in a dual wavelength, it would coagulate well in the dual wavelength, and you could cut at lower powers because that laser was able to take the energy and ramp it up through a computer inside 
to what we call a super pulsed level. Well, not just a few months ago, Ultimate la launched the second generation of that Gemini laser. It's called the Gemini Evo. And I wanted to introduce you to it with this quick video. So welcome to the world of Evo, the sleekest, most powerful diode laser on the market. Besides having this incredible dual wavelength laser that cuts very, very quickly, there is also a mobile app that connects to that laser and the dashboard that I showed you that you could actually see how many procedures you're doing. And if you plug in the amount of money you're charging per procedure, you will actually see the financial ROI that you're getting through using this laser. So now we've gotten past the stumbling blocks of science and understanding the unit. Let's get clinical to show you how we can implement this into day-to-day -day practice. So I'm gonna share with you numbers from Glidewell, the largest dental lab in the country. And Glide, this is Glidewell's numbers and saying this, not me. 50% of all dental impressions do not show the entire margins needed for fabrication of the restoration. 70% of impressions have incomplete finish lines and 36% of dentists retake impressions three or more times per month. Now that makes sense. You pack cord, you pull the cord, tissue bleeds, or you don't get enough retraction with that cord or you have curricular fluid coming up causing you issues, it's not so easy to take a good impression or a really good impression. So my answer is just make it easy. And you can make it easy by using a diode laser. I went into my local dental lab and I just said, let me look at some impressions. And this is the stuff that I found. I wanted to confirm Glidewell's accusations of what they're getting or assertions. And you could see from these impressions and these impressions that different dentists, because they're different colors, right? that this is what our labs have to work with. If you're gonna give them a substandard impression, you're gonna get a substandard result. You must give them impressions that look like this. And if you give them an impression that looks like that, you're expected to get a margin that comes back that's totally closed. How do you do that? You do it with a diode laser. This is a study that actually compared gingival displacement using a diode laser versus retraction cords. And what they found was the amount of gingival retraction and restoration to baseline resulting from use of the retraction cords or diode laser technique was similar, but diode laser required less time, was simpler for the operator and was more comfortable to the patient than retraction. So let's show you 
quick video on troughing. So in this situation, I've created a finish line and I'm going to trough and then bring my finish line back down to my margin. So I did it kind of above where I want it to be. And I'll show you a little bit of this video. Gemini, 810, 810 to the lot. A low amount of energy. And all we're doing is looking to create gingival width. But here I was going to bring the finish line a little further to the tissue. So if I remove some tissue height, I wasn't worried about it. What you don't see is bleeding. What you do see is complete retraction of the tissue. Now, if you're going to retract like that, you're going to get a good impression. It's not a problem. People get concerned about the tissue tags. Well, tissue tags will come off with a little bit of peroxide in an ultra-dense skinny syringe. It's very, very easy to do that. It's not a problem to do that. Here it is right here. This is an ultra dense um, brush tip with some hydrogen peroxide. And very quickly, what you see is the tissue tags come off and everything becomes clean. And that's how easy it is to retract tissue with that diode. Now, what we then do is we'll take an end cutting diamond. These are available for many of the manufacturers. This is a micro copy end cutting diamond, micro copy part number 5014. And I will use my, my NSK electric amp. So I will dial down my NSK electrics. And for those that are not using electrics, we'll talk about that in a second, but electrics really change the whole landscape of how you practice, because I can dial this down to about 20 or 25,000 RPMs and get complete tactile sensation of not only taking off that little lip that you may see with a chamfer, but bringing that margin further down. So let me take you through this. We pretty much completed our preparation. We've taken our NSK NLZ electric hand piece and dialed it down to about 18,000 RPMs. And we're gonna refine the margin using this Burr from microcopy that has just some diamonds at the end. We get complete tactile and sensation. And this is how we prepare our crowns to get ideal finish lines in order to get a perfect impression. It just there's nothing being removed we're off the axial wall, it's just off the end. You can kind of see we just did that. It's a fine diamond. You can see how we'll clean show you one more time. Looks. Right here at the lateral incisor at the gingival margin. Just gonna smooth that off. Very key to getting a perfect margin is smoothing things off. It's a light stroke, especially just so you can line. see how this thing works. You see how clean that is. For those of you that don't have electrics. I will only tell you that electric changed the way I practice about 12 or 13 years ago. And NSK's further changed my practice. Being able to cut things quickly, yet dial things down when I need to dial them down is a huge benefit to the practice. And if we start looking as, you know, finishing a margin with an end cutting diamond or eliminating that lip, you, it's hard to do with an air-driven handpiece. You need the precision, the feel of dialing down that electric. Remember, air-driven goes 40,000 RPMs. I cut that one down to 18,000, less than half, in order for me to fill, feel the margin. Now, NSK has unique technology in their handpieces. And there are a lot of electrics out there, but NSK has some very unique technology, especially as COVID existed and COVID continues to... Uh, loom upon us, Air Technique has the ability to, with the touch of a button, literally, it takes a second to switch between water jet and water spray by reducing the aerosol going from spray to jet. Besides air emphysema reduction when you're extracting a tooth, you're also able to risk aerosol exposure. And that becomes, you're still getting water, but you're eliminating the air out of that. And that's a very uh, beneficial type benefit of the NSK handpiece. Staying along the lines of keeping things clean, 
They also, their hand pieces also have what's called a clean head system, which prevents the entry of oral fluids and other contaminates into the hand piece, which will prolong not only the life of the bearings, but it'll prolong the life of the entire hand piece. So nothing gets sucked in. So even if you're sterilizing it, you're here, you're getting nothing sucked into it. So it's another benefit of NSK. So you get the speed, you get the torque, and you get the ability to shut the air off. NSK becomes a huge win-win if you're looking into electric hand pieces. Also, the NLZ, which is the motor that drives it, is the size of an iPhone. So it can be mounted on any bracket table or on any delivery system without inconveniencing what you have right now. So lasers and electrics kind of go hand in hand, especially in restorative dentistry. Here's a typical class two on the bicuspid. Digital electrodes fool us all the time. We see nothing there. But using our Microlux 2, this is a trans illuminator from a company called ADENT, one of the best $250 items you could have in the office. We're able to trans illuminate in between the teeth and we know we see decay there. As you can see, I open it up. But I also know that tissue is very high. And once I finish my proximal box, I'm going to have bleeding and it's going to be hard for me to control that bleeding. So it's important that I've told the patient prior that I might need to use a laser to clean things up because I'm going to charge them a fee for that if I do. So here we've used the Gemini uh, at one watt or 1 1.2 watts. We clean up that soft tissue, reduce that soft tissue so we can create a clean gingival margin for restoration. We place our sectional matrix. This is the treatment matrix from Ultradent. And for those that are not using sectionals, this is a great asset to your class two armamentarium. The treatment matrix actually sits on the wedge. So you get primary stability from the wedge. That's kind of how it sits ideally. And then you're gonna get a rock solid proximal contact. We're going to selective etch our enamel. We're going to place our adhesive. Then we're going to place our bulk fill composite. And, you know, if you're not sure which one it is, it's this one right here. And we have this atraumatic situation using a laser and then cleaning things up and creating a restoration that disappears into the tooth. Clinical tip. How do I make it disappear into the tooth? I take a beveling diamond and I bevel the enamel the whole way around. And if we selectively etch that enamel and bevel that enamel, you will get a filling that disappears into your tooth. Where else do diodes help us? Well, what about uncovering an implant? For sure it helps us there. What about gingivectomies? This was done with the Evo just last week. Let me play this video for you and take you through using the Evo to do this. Look how clean it is. So this is in the dual wavelength. Dual wavelength meaning both wavelengths are combined. They're combined automatically in the laser, garnering the best benefits of each. All right, so we're going to be doing here an exposure or a gingivectomy. This patient is in that size with the drop of up septicane, a drop. Uh, you, you see, see the red dots? Plaque, Those are two drops of septicane where they got anesthetized, wavelength. and one in the papilla Except between the centers. You see the red dots of a watt. Up there, that's now what the they got. Here Literally a drop. Exposure. We don't need to do a lot. The patient is anesthetized. She's not going to feel anything at all. Because the energy is not absorbed by hydroxyapatite, I can how actually lean on the tooth here and press down on that laser and tissue. carve out the tissue the way I the want it to. The tissue is moderately here. thick here as well. Watch how cleanly this happens. This is unedited video, so you can actually see exactly how this happens. I My right successes to the and mistakes are all in these structure, And what you're not gonna see is not too many mistakes, see thank God. Bleeding, despite you'll see how cleanly this is. I'm around the metal. I'm not worried about the metal. I'm not dancing around I'm the dancing metal. Around the I'm wire. totally around the metal doing what I have to do. Very quickly. You're going to see this piece disappear, just like that. And now you see how quickly you can see how cleanly too. that comes off, and you don't see any tissue totally exposed. Now, I'm going to do a little that's a big more here, but by cuspid, in between the centrals, I have a little bit of inflammation. I'm going to do a little, little bit of plastic between the centrals when I get there. Here, I'm reducing a little more tissue by the bicuspid, but I don't want to destroy the entire papilla. 
I just want to clean things up. Also remember that diodes will exert an antibacterial effect when they cut. So it's also going to reduce inflammation because of the antibacterial cut. So finishing up and cleaning this up, yeah, it would have been easier if I took the wire out for sure, but I didn't want to be bothered and I didn't ask the orthodontist to do it, so I'm just dancing around it because I know the diode is safe to use around the wire and the bracket. And we do have some moderately thick tissue here, so I'm just going to thin things out a little bit and then we're going to be done with this too. Do so you see how clean that becomes very, very quickly? And it's not bleeding per se, because there's nothing right here in the center. Turn to me a little now bit. Now I'm going to do a little gingival right blast. So I'm going to cut the power down a little we'll bit. Now go in a parallel motion. Kind of suction right here. Snow plow that to nice fill. I just want to fillet it just or thin it out. But I also slightly. have to understand the diode energy is only coming out the tip. So I'm kind of going side to side. I'm just going to thin it out just a little bit to flatten that off. And you can see how cleanly this cuts. See how clean just that is. Just like that. You don't have to we do much to that out slightly. It's a slight cleanup. And that's how clean And a gingival plastic of that tissue. Turn this way a little bit. What I'm gonna do now is just take, rinse that off. I'm gonna have a regular suction. If you just rinse really it off with some water, you can see this is a pretty clean situation. is completed. Very easy, very quick, and a great service to the patient. Uncovering that implant. So this is uncovered with the Gemini. Once again, notice no bleeding, and we can take an impression or a scan the same day. We scan it, we put our scanning flag in. This is done with our TRIO scanner. And two weeks later, that will be inserted. What about phrenectomies? One drop of anesthetic on each side of the frenum is all you actually need. So a drop here and a drop here. You may need a drop here in this situation because if you look at the frenum, the frenum runs all the way to the palate. So we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and not go into here, but we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and at least go into here to sever the attachment of that frenum. This is, a, this is a tool called a groove director. And the groove director is a tool, it's actually a veterinary tool, but allows you to retract the maxillary frenum and allows you to have clear access of the surgical site. Now, what does one have to be worried about in this situation, of course? One has to be worried about that you shine the laser on that shiny surface and the energy will reflect off and go somewhere you don't want it to go. So as long as you're posting, as long as you're pointing that tip to the soft tissue, then you will have absolutely no problems when you do your surgery. So we've retracted the tissue. We've done our surgery. You can see that freedom is totally removed. We've, how do we finish this? Sometimes we use a suture like we did here. Very often we use a product called glue stitch or skin stitch, which you also see here. That's what you see around the suture. The glue stitch or skin, sti skin stitch is purple cyanoacrylate. And then what that will do is that will form a barrier so nothing gets into that wound over a week. As the wound begins to heal, it'll push that cyanoacrylate out, almost like a scab, and it will heal beautifully underneath. It also prevents the early regrowth of tissue, so you don't get a recurrent regrowth of tissue. So that's why we always use the cyanoacrylate whenever we do our phrenectomies.
Diodes are also a great tool to remove a fibroma. One of the things you have to understand when we spoke about is that diode energy is absorbed by pigment and hemoglobin. Fibromas in general are very fibrous. There's not a lot of pigment and hemoglobin in those things. So you're gonna to have to use more energy in order to get your cut to be as quick as possible. The tricky part of these, as you'll see in this video, is that an assistant has to grab that fibroma and with college pliers, it gets kind of a little sticky. Uh, they slip off and things like that, but eventually we get it done as you'll see here in this video. Open really big. Again, the patient has one drop of septicane on either side of the fibroma. When I say a drop, I mean a drop, not a carpal, because you're going to distort the area and make it tougher for you to work. the tricky part here trying to grab this thing and it slips off and my sister slips Slippy off. Slippery little thing. Am I worried about the metal of the college plier? Absolutely not. Notice the illuminated handpiece of the Gemini illuminating the field. That's one of the benefits of the Gemini that you don't see in other ladies on the market. Once you get to the thicker stalk underneath, you will have some resistance. So you have to just remember the energy comes out the end of that tip, and you have to give it a second or two to kind of penetrate the fibrous stalk of these fibromas. Also keep in mind that anything you cut out of the mouth, you need to send for biopsies. We do with all of these. We send them all for biopsy 100% of the time and tell the patient that the pathology lab might send them a bill or want their medical insurance information. And again, no matter what it looks like, I am cutting with the end of the tip only, the kind of see the below of the initiated tip. Once we get near the end, the assistant will pull a little tighter and you'll kind of see this thing spread a little bit and eventually snap off into the pilot pile. I'm digging deeper into the base in order to get a smooth base at the end. If I don't get a smooth base at the end, I'll go at the base with my diode laser. It's not a problem. This is a sutureless technique that will heal within 10 days to two weeks perfectly. See, we're almost at the end. You'll see how easily we eliminate that fibroma and the soft tissue is totally intact. There's no bleeding. I see a little extra fibrous tissue here at that base, so I'm gonna go at it just to make sure we don't get regrowth of that. Kind of scar that wound a little bit. Again, we're not gonna get any bleeding. I'm just gonna remove any residual fibers that could be there. And that's the end of our procedure. You can see how beautiful that is. We're gonna take a little peroxide in here and clean that up. That's another tip from Ultradent. That's an Inspiral tip from Ultradent on a syringe. And we're gonna clean that up just to make sure that we get rid of all that tissue tag so it heals properly. And you can see how beautiful that, that incision is and how nice that technique is. And it's gonna heal, like I told you, very well in a couple of weeks. Well, what about Using diodes in perio, having our hygienists use diodes. First of all, all our hygienists are laser trained and 
it's important for us that they've learned how to use lasers and use them well because it's a true adjunct to what we do. Diodes will work well as an adjunct to scaling and replaning, but it's not going to cure periodontal disease. It's only going to control disease. So I'm not going to get a seven millimeter pocket down to a two millimeter pocket. That's not going to happen. Will I get a bleeding five down to a non-bleeding three or a non-bleeding four if I use my diode as part of soft tissue management therapy? Yes, I will get that. So it's about controlling disease. Now, some people will say that controlling disease isn't good enough. Well, you know, would you rather have full osseous surgery? Would you rather have a facelift or would you rather have Botox? Botox wears away in three months. It's controlling an aging problem. Diodes are the same way. If the patient follows through with good oral hygiene and you follow through with good adjunctive techniques, well, the diode is going to be a great adjunct to what you're doing by killing bacteria, and it will work well in your soft tissue management program. Why diodes? Well, first of all, if you use diodes, you're going to reduce bacterial presence and eliminate the biofilm. If you do that, you're going to decrease or eliminate inflammation. And if you get rid of all the inflammation, the body will start to heal. You also get a biostimulation effect, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, and that will help the tissue to heal at the cellular level. You also get an increase in blood supply, and you get osteoplastic and osteoblastic activity all by treating an area with a diode laser. And it's not me saying this. The studies go back over 20 years. This is a study that was done in Austria by Professor Andreas Moritz, one of the brilliant minds in lasers uh, worldwide. And this study was in 1998 where they talked about the treatment of periodontal pockets with a diode laser. What they found was the diode laser revealed the bacterial cytal effect and helped to reduce inflammation in the periodontal pockets in addition to scaling. The diode laser therapy in combination with scaling supports healing of the periodontal pocket through eliminating bacteria. 2015, the role of diode lasers as adjuncts to scaling and root planning in the treatment of chronic perio. In chronic periodontitis, patients with probing depths greater than five millimeters, scaling and root planning plus diode laser is more effective in the treatment of chronic perio, excuse me, back that up, than when scaling and root planning is used alone. Now, this is a very powerful statement. It's telling you that do what you're doing, that's great, add a diode laser into it, and now your treatment is way more powerful than what it would be without the diode laser. So, you know, to me, these studies, and I, I just picked two, but these studies show how powerful diode lasers are as an adjunct of scaling and root planning. Now, how do we do this? First of all, we're not cutting anything in most situations, especially in New York, where my hygienist can't cut. They can only use the energy of a diode laser to kill bacteria. Now that energy is warm, it's not blazing hot. So typically we can do this without the need for anesthetic, but our hygienist will do it quadrant by quadrant, spend 10 to 15 seconds in a pocket in a sewing machine type motion in that pocket. So we'll take the laser tip to the base of the pocket and then move up and down around the base of that pocket uh, and let that energy do its thing in the periodontal pocket. Let me show you how that kind of works. This is a healthy mouth, but just to give you a demo. On an so 15 to 20 seconds speak. in the pocket, moving around. If the pocket was seven millimeters, we'd go into we go into four, four tenths of a watt on the eight ten wavelength in an uninitiated tip. If you see any tissue build up on the tip, you want to be sure to wipe the to wipe tip it if off. You get, Otherwise, remember, the tip will initiate. Tissue, and that's full of pigment and hemoglobin, which the diode laser likes. You want to wipe that tish that tip with water. She's not water feeling any pain, and she's not anesthetized. 
And you see here how it starts to just, the energy is exerted in that pocket. You're not cutting anything. You're just using the energy internal in that pocket. And we go tooth by tooth. The tissue is healthy like here. You don't have to spend as much. You'll spend longer periods of time in areas that are unhealthy. Sewing machine type motion. In and out. And there's your demo. And that's how easy that technique is. I'm going to share with you one more case. And this is an off-label use for the Gemini. So I've done this. It's not on the FDA approved list, but I'm going to show you the result. And you will see how incredible this is. So there's something called photobiomodulation. The Gemini Evo comes with three attachments for photobiomodulation. It's an attachment that takes the energy from cutting energy to just energy. And what it does is you see this big wide tip. If I put this tip or handpiece in an area that I want to reduce inflammation or blood flow, increase blood flow, reduce inflammation, reduce pain, the energy will do that from this big tip. Now, the Evo comes with three tips in different sizes where you could use this photobiomodulation attachment. Now, I know it sounds like voodoo, and I know it sounds like trickery, but the energy does work. You can use it to reduce TMJ pain. Some dentists use it post-endo and post-oral surgery, intraorally with the smaller tip at the apices of where you're working to, again, reduce inflammation, to promote blood flow, to promote osteoblastic, osteoplastic activity, basically to support healing. And that's what this attachment is for. And the Gemini comes with three of them. Now, many of you or some of you might have seen that since COVID, there's been an uptick in Bell's palsies, either through the virus or through the vaccine. I'm not here to debate which one, but I've seen more Bell's palsies in the last year and a half than I've seen in the last 25 years. Now I know from my learning and from my experience that lasers can, you, you can use lasers for photobiomodulation to treat Bell's palsy. And you can get a decent success rate. You can't promise 100 success rate, 100% success rate, but you can get a substantial improvement. Here was a study that showed the complete and fast recovery from idiopathic facial paralysis using laser photobiomodulation. Bell's palsy treated with photobiomodulation in an adolescent. It was a rare case report in review of the literature, and photobiomodulation was effective to treat Bell's palsy. Now, here are some true things about Bell's palsy. Most Bell's palsy, about 80%, will resolve in six months. But what do doctors do today? They give antivirals and they give steroids in the hope that Bell's palsy resolves. Well, this is Kurt. And Kurt developed Bell's palsy, was treated with antivirals and steroids, and came to me two weeks later because one time, a number of years ago, his daughter, who was my Pilates instructor, somehow we were talking about this, and I must have told her I treated someone with a Bell's palsy with a laser, and she remembered and sent me her father. You could see his right eye is affected. The right side of his face is affected. He can't move the right side of his face at all. He can't close his eye. You see the total crippedness of the lip. This is two weeks in. After steroids, antivirals, he had absolutely no resolution of the Bell's palsy. You have to understand a little bit of how the innervation works. And the innervation really works in the top of the forehead down the right side of the eye, below the eye, all the way down the cheek into the chin. So when treating Bell's palsy with a diode laser, you have to hit all the nerve branches in order to get some resolution. So we, we did it. We treated him with 
the PBM attachment, this is with our Gemini, and we treated him twice a week for six to eight minutes per time. Now I'm gonna show you a video, and I knew from day one I was gonna help him because when I treated him here, right where you see this attachment, I saw a little twitch down here. That means I, and that was after the first treatment. So I knew I excited something and I was confident I'd get him better. You may not see it. You could try to look for it. I missed it sometimes when looking at it. I see it a lot of times. Let me show you the video. And it should be somewhere around here. You'll see movement. This is painless. The patient can't wear safety glasses, which you have to normally wear. So we've covered his eyes with gauze. But I'm following the innervative path of the nerve. And look, you just see a little something right there. That wasn't breathing. Breathing was down here, but you saw a little something right there. Again, you see a little something right there. So we're, we're following the path of the nerve, the way you could see what's going on. So you see, that's what we did. Um, and we did it twice a week for six to eight weeks. This is week two, a little bit of resolution you see already on the lip, it's not as crooked. Week three, you see the crookedness getting better. Week four, substantially better, the eye is the last to resolve. Week five, you can almost smile, you can open his eye really, really wide, you can see things improving. On week six, he can close his eye already. You see the lip is almost even. And this is what we were able to do with the dial. We were able to go in six weeks from here to here. Now, this is what you call an ROI that you can't measure. This is changing somebody's life, and he was indebted to us. What do we charge for this? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. We didn't charge a penny for it. So... To summarize, I kind of gave you a little taste of diodes and the, and the Evo and, and the Gemini Evo from Ultradent. They're a great addition to any practice. They're extremely, extremely versatile. And if you combine them with other technology, you can gather ideal treatments. I want to thank all of you for joining me here tonight. I hope I gave you a little taste of what we do day in, day out. And I'm going to open the floor for questions for those that want to ask. Someone asked me, is there a code I can use to charge for the laser during restoration? Typically we'll charge a gingivectomy code. And I think there's even a code for like access to caries. We don't use it, but we use a gingivectomy code, but we typically will tell the patient that we're charging them the fee. If we can get the money from insurance, we'll get the money from insurance. If we can't, we can't. But Again, I've told them that before the procedure, not after. So my line is inform before you perform. If you told them before you warn them, if you told them after it's an excuse and I don't wanna make any excuses. So someone asked initiated versus non-initiated tip uses. I didn't wanna get into that because it was very short time tonight. In order for a diode tip to cut, we have to initiate the tip or activate the tip. So anytime we're cutting, we will activate the tip. Now, ultra-dense tips already come either initiated or activated versus not. So if we're gonna use the diode to cut, we're gonna use an initiated or activated tip. If we're gonna use the diode just for energy, like for perio or for treating an aptus ulcer, which I didn't get to tonight, we're gonna to use a non-initiated tip and you can buy those tips already that way from ultra-dense. Can we use laser for teeth whitening? Um, there are some lasers that have a whitening attachment to them. It really depends on the FDA approval, what that laser has. I can't tell you if you can or can't, you'd have to really look at the FDA approval. And typically you want the whitening gel to have a chromophore that will be attracted to that laser. So I don't see a big advantage to it. 
but there are some lasers that you can use with whitening. Someone asked me the old Gemini versus the new one. Listen, they're all going to cut very well, but the old Gemini, 20 watts of peak power, that means it hits a high of 20 watts and immediately relaxes versus 100 watts of peak power and an immediate relaxes. And this is a complicated, I can go in for hours on this, but it, they're both two watt lasers. But the computer generates 20 watts of peak power with the Gemini and then relaxes it versus 100 watts of peak power with the Evo. So in theory, it's gonna cut a little bit quicker, plus the dashboard that you get that allows you to attract the track the procedures with the Evo, plus the three PBM tips that you get with the Evo. The Evo gives you a more desirable clinical package if you're gonna use the laser, but they're both great lasers. Am I using lasers or PBM for skin cancers, Michael? I'm not using anything. I'm referring them to the dermatologist. I don't treat skin cancers at all. Can you initiate the side of the tip with carbonization and side cut? The answer is no, it doesn't cut from the side. You may get a little bit of heat off the side, but you're not gonna cut efficiently with the side. It only cuts off the tip, even if you initiate the sides. Have you used the three million PBL and aphthous ulcers? Um, Becky, I've not used the three million PBL and aphthous ulcers only because I use the, the pure non-initiated tip um, and, and I get great results with that. So I'm sure it could work on there. And it may work on there, but I use the, the uninitiated tip on the Aptis and get 100% resolution 100% of the time. I truly, truly appreciate. Um, always good to see friends listening to friends. Uh, I, listen, I love doing these. I love sharing and I love the interaction. Enjoy it with your family. And if you have questions, reach out to your NSK or alternate rep, or don't forget you can DM me at Vino Dentino. Thank you very much and have a great, great weekend.